Hello, we're looking at symmetric and asymmetric encryption, two methods, I suppose, two processes to encrypt data. We've talked about just the general concept of encryption before, the fact that it's generally quite easy to intercept data over networks, especially with so much wireless communication. But encryption makes data unreadable, and only the authorised viewers can decrypt and so read the data. So basically scrambles up data as you transfer it over networks. And actually, in that basic example we've talked about symmetric encryption already so this is where we have one secret key that's applied to the plain text the normal original text to create the scrambled up ciphertext so we've got two parties in this communication we've got the sender and we've got the receiver and the sender is trying to send this plain text to the receiver and they've got a key of two and this means the receiver also needs to have the key of two they need to know the secret key so the, the idea is this key is kept secret just between these two people everyone else shouldn't have access to this key and so they apply this key to this plain text and send it so three four five six seven and they can decrypt for it when it's received they can decrypt it because they know the key and so this very sophisticated algorithm is to add the key to the plain text fortunately real algorithms are more complicated than this but the idea is that only these two people should know the secret key and the key is integral to actually being able to decrypt the data at the other end. So just to hopefully re-emphasize, with symmetric encryption the same key encrypts and decrypts the data. We've got the symmetry be between the encryption and the decryption. It's the same key that's doing the hard work essentially. And this means both the sender and receiver need to have this key. This does create a bit of an issue because we've got to actually exchange the key at some point. We've got to give the key to the receiver so they can decrypt it. And we've got to do this securely because if the key is compromised, if it's sent over an open channel and someone's intercepted it, then they can then later decrypt the data without being given access to it. They know the key so they can decrypt it. So we've got to make sure the key is sent securely. But if you manage to send it securely, why not also send the data securely at the same point, which defeats the point of encryption? Because if it's if you know it's going to be secure, like if you're meeting someone in person and giving them data, then you know it's secure. So it's a bit of a kind of paradox here that you need the key to be secure in order to make the data secure. So it's a slight issue which asymmetric encryption can fix. And this uses two different keys. It uses a key pair. So one of these keys is a public key which is available to absolutely everyone who wants it. And then you have a second secret private key which only one party knows about. So the process is a little bit more complicated but it's not too bad hopefully. So the, the fact that we've got a pair and we have this asymmetry is because if you encrypt the data using a public key it can only be decrypted by the other key, the private key. And the same applies the other way around. So data encrypted by the private key can only be decrypted by the public key. So you can see we've got this uh, asymmetry and that the other one can only decrypt what was encrypted by the other key, if that makes any sense. But the idea is that they're kind of opposites and they need both sides of this in order to decrypt and encrypt the data. A common scenario where encryption is really important is communication with a bank, for example. So we've got several devices here, several different people who want to communicate with the bank. And they all have access to the bank's public key. And this is specific to the bank, so the bank has produced this public key for them and all their customers can use it. And they can use this key to encrypt the data. And the bank has access to, only the bank has access to its private key. So they encrypt the data using the public key and therefore it can only be decrypted by the bank with its private key. So only the bank knows the private key, anyone else really in the world can know the public key if they want to. But on the flip side, only the bank in the entire world can decrypt it because they have access to this private key. And the same can work in reverse, if the bank wants to send something back to the customer, they can encrypt it with their, pub with their private key and then the person can decrypt it with the public key. So two sides of the same coin essentially, but the key thing is only the bank can decrypt it coming from a customer because they've got the private key. All the communications between the two parties are in the form of ciphertext, so in encrypted form, well, that's clearly the aim of the game here. So far I've managed to avoid talking about the actual algorithms at the heart of this, and that's partially because they rely on often very complicated maths problems and crucially maths problems with no known efficient solution. And that means that they might be able to get solved by brute force perhaps just by trying every combination in a million years or a billion years. So no known efficient solution, no feasible solution, which is perfect because we don't want someone to be able to just break our encryption without knowing the key. So that's what we mean by no known efficient solution. There might be a solution out there but we don't know about it at the moment. Just for background, one of the common problems which is utilised by algorithms such as the RSA algorithm is to use the fact that factorisation is actually very difficult to do. So factorisation is something you've done from a very young age, so it doesn't seem difficult, but um, 
it is for computers, especially with very, very large numbers. So factorization is about breaking a number into its, decomposing it into its factors. So 16 has got two times eight, four times four. And it's actually very easy to do the multiplication step, but very difficult to do the factorization step. So for example, if we had seven and 13, two prime numbers, prime factorization is what's really utilized here. So two prime numbers, seven and 13, seven times 13 is 91. That's very easy to do for a computer, but actually it's very difficult to then work out which were the prime factors that made that number. Obviously 91, not a difficult challenge for a computer, it can solve that very easily. But if this was a thousand digits long, it's basically impossible. And an asymmetric encryption algorithm can utilize this idea because if seven and 13 were our private keys, and 91 was our public key. We could tell everyone that 91 was our public key. Everyone in the world could know. And that is safe because no one's going to be able to actually work out what the two prime factors were. No one's got a powerful enough computer to actually work out what the original numbers were, apart from us, because we've worked out already. It's easy, it's relatively easy to multiply the two numbers together, bearing in mind these are extremely large numbers. But it's basically impossible to get them back again. And that's the whole idea here. That's why it's nice and secure. Unlike symmetric encryption, no secure channel is actually needed to get the key in the first place. The private key is kept private, no one knows it, so no issue of transmitting that at all. And the public key is safe, as for reasons we've talked about, is safe just to give to everyone. So there's no issue about having to exchange the key in a secure manner, like in person for example, so that's not an issue. The main issue though is that because we're dealing with very complicated problems and extremely large numbers, there does take a lot more processing power to make this work. Whereas symmetric encryption is relatively straightforward because you can be secure enough without dealing with the huge numbers which we are with asymmetric encryption. And for this reason, because this is slower than symmetric encryption, often this is used just to transfer the key required for symmetric encryption. So we'll use asymmetric encryption to encrypt the key, and we can exchange the key securely in that case, and then we'll switch to using symmetric encryption because it's faster, and it's perfectly secure. So a slight misconception is that symmetric encryption is not secure. It's perfectly secure as long as you've got the key and the key is kept secret.